So this morning, we're going to sing, uh, if anybody has a reason to sing, I know that we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Amen. Because if God said he made the rocks to praise his name, the trees and the wind and the streams and the animals, I know we got a reason to sing. Amen. I know that we, so it's not in the songbook, but it's really easy to follow along with. We will get it in the songbook, so amen. 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 If anybody has a reason to sing, we do, oh, we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, we do, said we do. If anybody, if anybody has a reason to sing, we do, yes, we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, I know that we do, yes, we do. Come on, let's praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise Him every day. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Sing. You praise Him when you get a paycheck, amen. You praise Him when He bless you, don't you? Praise the Lord no matter what. Praise the Lord. Sing. Praise the Lord. Everybody has a reason to sing. We do, yes we do. We do. If anybody has a reason to sing to my Lord, I know that we do. Oh yes we do. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Oh praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Amen. My name is Kenyatta Charlie. I'm one of the deacons that serve here at the River City Christian Ministries. And I just want to welcome you to, to our Sunday morning worship service. I'm just so excited to be here. And uh, it's just been awesome just to hear all the voices. We've already had a great Sunday school lesson. And, yes. and um, I just want to implore you that, you know, as much as we love you being here for our worship service at 11, it is truly uh, something to grow in studying the word at our Sunday school. So I definitely want to invite you to come and join us uh, when we do that also. But let's continue worshiping right now, lifting our voices, singing. Let's make sure we continue worshiping when Mark gives his lesson. But when we're moved, we express it by taking notes, by really digging into the scriptures. That is a form of worship. Not just lifting our voices, not just our voices and praising, okay. but worshiping God in diligent reading his word and more than anything, obeying it and living it out. We're going to have one of our teen Christians pray for us. Open us up with prayer. Amen. Yeah. Tell them who you are first. Uh, hello, my name is Laron Walker, and I'm the youngest teen Christian here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can everybody bow their heads? Lord, Father, I just thank you for today. I just thank you that you allow us to come to your house every day and just allow us with open arms to be here and just allow us just to show your love and i pray that this service goes great and that we just we worship you and that you're the only focus that we have amen in jesus name amen 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 we're gonna sing song number 380 in our burgundy song books should be located in the seat in front of you to the left or the right we're gonna sing 380 what can wash away my sin this is the song we're gonna sing to prepare our hearts for communion amen What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus For my pardon this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. The fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes 
makes me white as snow the clouds I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow the fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus Good morning, church. I am Tremont Slade, one of the brothers that serve here at the River City Christian Ministry. Today I will be giving a communion message. I would like to thank the leadership and most of all, God for this opportunity. This is the point in our service where we focus on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please turn your Bibles to Luke 22, 14 through 20. And can I get an amen when we're there? And it reads, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. When taking communion, we are remembering that Christ died for us, offered us forgiveness for our sins. Christ's sacrifice gave us a second chance, a chance at a new life the opportunity to have a relationship with God. I reflect on what I was, what I was saying by becoming a Christian. If it fulfills me and gives me gratitude for my relationship with God and the new life that I have now. In this new life, I'm blessed to be a husband and a father. Because of the cross, I can overcome any obstacle or hardship, no matter how unbearable it may seem. I no longer face difficulties in the way that I used to do before my newly life that I live now. And only through the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for me that I do find the strength to endure. Brothers and sisters, as we take communion, let's truly reflect on how Jesus died for each of us. Let's remember that without his sacrifice, we wouldn't have the gift of his spirit to guide us through life's hardest trials. As we partake, let the cracker remind us of his body and the juice of his blood that forgives our sins. When you receive the communion cup, pull back the top layer for the cracker and pull back the second layer of the, for the juice. Could the ushers please come forward? Please bow your head. Dear God, thank you for waking us up, Lord. Thank you for letting us just get here safely and just have, you know, hearing that beautiful Sunday school message uh, given to us by Brother JC. And I just pray that you're with the other men that will be coming forth, speaking forth, and with Mr. Mark. And I pray that you just speak through him and you have our hearts and minds open and we just receive the message today. And we really, we really receive it, Lord, and we just keep it with us and take it to our heart. Because the goal at the end of the day is to get to you. And, I, and this will only help us make that goal happen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, my name is Nasir Williams. I'm one of the brothers that serve here at the River City Christian Ministries, and I will be doing the uh, tithing uh, prayer uh, portion. And if I could have the uh, ushers come up, please. All right. Let us bow our heads, please. 
God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you do for us, God. Thank you for uh, just allowing us to be here this Sunday morning, God, uh, just worshiping you, God. I, I pray uh, that we're able to uh, just give our all to you, God, uh, no matter what that, what that means, uh, God, whether that be monetarily, God, whether that mean that we're giving of our time, of our effort, of our of our love, of our devotion to you, God, I pray that we just uh, give our all, God. I pray that um, that we can just give a fraction of what you've given us, God, because they, you've given us so much. You've given us life. You've given us a, a home. You've given us uh, things that we, we can't even uh, begin to describe, God. And I just, I just pray that we're able to give back just, just a little bit of what, we're, what you've given us. I thank you for this day again. In Jesus' name I pray. The church Amen. says? Amen. Amen. And the church says? Amen. 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 Well, we're about to continue our worship service. Uh, the song that we're going to sing before Mark comes to give us the message is called uh, Hail Jesus. It's a call and response. You won't need your Bibles. I mean, you won't need any song books. <laughs> you do need your Bibles. <laughs> you just won't need it for the song. All right. You just repeat after me. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your Word. Because I want to see your kingdom come. Because I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory to the land. You will take us into the land. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that. Jesus we sing, hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you sing, are. Hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How powerful you are. All right, church, let's go. We sing, hail, Jesus, you're my king. Hail, Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Let's go, church. Praise me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Because I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours we sing done. glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory to the land. You will take us into the land. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. We I church is go. In your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. We reign. sing hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. You're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your way. You're perfect in all your way. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Because I want to see your kingdom. Come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours we be done. We sing glory, glory to the land. Glory, Let's go, glory church. to the land. You will take us into the land. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. We sing hail, hail. Line of Judah, line of Judah. How powerful you are! How powerful we you sing, hail, hail, line of Judah. How powerful you are! How powerful you are! I sing, hail, Jesus.
Jesus, you're my Lord. Little One more time. Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Because I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours we be done. We sing glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory to the land. You will take us into the land. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. You gotta sound like we you mean it. Come on. In your name. And proclaim that Jesus reign. And proclaim that Jesus reign. We sing, hail, hail, line of Judah. Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your way. We say, Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Because I want to see your kingdom come not my will but yours be done we sing glory glory to the land you will take us into the land we will conquer in your name and proclaim that Jesus reigns and proclaim that Jesus we sing, reigns. hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. How wonderful we you sing, are. hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Amen. Amen. Church, Amen. please be seated. Powerful song. Amen. It's great to be in the kingdom of God. Come on, family. It's great to be Christians. It's great to be in the house of God, singing to God, because how powerful he is. And who's got who's who are, uh, Courtney? We got Courtney mom back with us today. Yeah. What's her name? Miss Irma, can you please stand for me, Miss Irma? Hey, everybody give this Irma a round of applause. It's Miss Irma's birthday today, just like it was Jamie's birthday today. So after Jamie announced before we leave, we're going to sing happy birthday to her, amen? amen? That way I can cut up, not on camera. <laughs> Guys, it's great. I, brothers and sisters, I'm so proud to be your minister. I'm so proud to be your brother. You know, I'm just so proud to be with you. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, our world is chaotic, but there's peace in the house of God. You know, and I, I'm just so grateful we have each other. Every time I walk through the door, I'm just ecstatic. I can't wait to get here. I, I, I get up in the morning, I come and turn the lights, and I just be looking around and be like, hey, we're going to celebrate God in a few hours. And, uh, I, and, and yet we also celebrate him all day at home and wherever we go. It's a celebration to be a Christian. Amen. And uh, I like what J.C. shared in Sunday school about people, chaos, this chaos makes people sad and discouraged, but we can drown out the noise with Jesus. Amen. And we can keep our focus on Christ. Amen. And that's what it's about. Amen. Amen. I'm going to thank all our friends for visiting with us today and we have uh, Sam Patrice out of town for vacation. They'll be back this week. And I want to thank, um, I want to uh, thank, um, you know, some of us know their situation with their grandkids that lives with them and the responsibility they take home. But I, I really want to take time out to thank the Sierra and Simone and Tremai and um, Jakari, how they step up and help their parents. Carol and Kenya. I, I really want to thank y'all. Y'all stand up for me. Y'all stand up for me. I just want to thank y'all. 
for the way y'all step up. Where's Kenya? Stand up, Kenya. Yeah, that, where's Carol? She's watching the kids. Thank y'all. You know, that's what family's all about. And I'm just so, I was telling Simone this morning, I'm so proud of y'all. How y'all jumped in there and said, Mom, y'all not on your own. And I want to thank the congregation for the help that they do in every way. No matter whether it's watching their kids so they can go out or just being family to them. Um, we need each other. Uh, a saint would like to discourage us and beat us down. But we got to be here for one another. Amen, family? So last week I talked about being in his, in his image. I'm going to talk about some of that too, what we just talked about. But as Christians, it is our goal to develop the image of Christ while we walk with him. We must develop a Christ-like character that changes our hearts, motivations, thoughts, actions to be consistent with who Christ is. We're not talking about his physical image, but his attributes and character, his character. The Bible only speaks of Jesus' physical appearance in Isaiah 52, Isaiah 53, and Revelations 1 through 1 and 4, 14. But the Bible is full of examples of how to have a Christ-like character and how to live in his image. Growing in the image of Christ means to grow in, in having the character and attributes of Christ, which is righteousness and holiness. Amen. Family and friends, let us make it our goal to live in the image of Christ. Amen. Family and friends, here are some ways, just a few things that I, my wife and I found that we brought to you. So I'm going to share a little bit about last week and then we'll pick up on in this image part two. Last week, we talked about the first one was we must spend time with Jesus and get to know who he is. That is vital. Uh, my second point was family and friends. Once we get to know who Jesus is, we must give him the invitation to come into our lives. And we talk about Acts 8, 26 through 40, the baptism of the, uh, of the Ethiopian eunuch and how he learned he was reading the Bible and Philip the Spirit sent Philip up to the chariot and shared, but he asked Philip, do you understand what you're reading? And Philip said, how can, how can I let somebody explain it to me? And he went into the chariot and started with that very passage of scripture. And once he read it for himself, he saw a pond. It was water. I don't know if it's a lake or a river, but I'm going to just call it a pond like out there. Riding by and he says, there's water. Why shouldn't I? Get baptized. And he ordered the church to be stopped immediately after he learned about Jesus. Went down to the water and got baptized. Philip came up went to Exodus and he went on his way. But he saw the need of being born again. We must see our need to be born again. We got plenty of people on this earth claiming to be Christians, but don't live the life. We got plenty of hypocrites all around us. I grew up people hearing people talk about hypocrites. I'm not going to go to church with a bunch of, full of bunch of hypocrites. Because they would go to church and then go out party Friday night and they saw some of the same people. And they go to church and act holy. I'm just here to share with you, we don't act holy. We start to be holy. To be like Christ. We use the Bible as our standard. And we hold to that standard. And I've seen the more we hold, uh, sadly, more people run away than stay. But that's on them. But for us in this household, we're going to hold to the standard of Jesus Christ. And my third point was to live in his image. We must be willing to live out his purpose in our lives. Family, we got to live out his purpose. We are called Christ ambassadors. Ambassadors for Christ is someone who represents Christ and spreads the gospel to others. It is how God makes his appeal to the lost through Christians. We are God's special agents called to proclaim Christ and to direct people to obedience and commitment to Jesus Christ. That's who we are. And so, yes, if you're visiting today, we, are, we only did what the Bible told us to do. We're not trying to get credit for nothing. We're just trying to share the good news and spread the love. 
of Jesus Christ. So today, that was part one. Today, part two, and sing to me, baby, sing to me. Lord have mercy, fired up. You, you ain't gonna be fired, more fired up than me, I'm gonna tell you right now. Cause it's on, it's on. To live in his image, my fourth point is to live in his image, we must love the way Christ loves. Love the way Christ loves. Now, JC, our brother Julius did a great job talking about love this morning. Amen. He had no idea I had it in my notes. Come on now. So you know God is working. Amen. But see now, he talking about how love, God is love. He talked about a, a lot about what love is. I'm here to tell you, the Bible teaches we're supposed to love just like Jesus loves. Amen. That's a whole nother level. Right. Because how did Jesus love us? Well, y'all like you better act like you know something. How did Jesus love us? Yeah. And he tells you, you better love like me. That, that is a whole nother level of love. And I expect us, brothers and sisters, to imitate Christ, to be just like him. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. I don't hear my pages turning, so I know y'all must be writing the, type the thing down, and then you're touching computers and your phones. I love you for your phones and computers, but I want to hear my pages. Okay, here we go. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Amen. Are you with me, family? Amen. To live in this image, we must love the way Christ loved. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If you dare say amen. amen, let's ride, let's go. Let's go through the scriptures. Therefore, if you have any encouragement for being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, here we go, if any com common sharing in, his, in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, having that same love, having that same love, been one in spirit and one of mine. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of who? Christ Jesus. Come on now, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. The same mindset of Jesus Christ. That might have went over some of y'all head. Did you even understand what God is saying to you? You got to have the mindset of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, brother, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant been made in human likeness and been found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Who is supposed to be like now? And gave himself the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. In heaven and on the earth. And then he wasn't done. And under the earth also. So God says, you can play that game like you don't know me, but you will know me. Every one of you. On earth, in heaven, and under the earth. Hell would know who God is. Because who put you there? And every tongue would acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of the God, the Father. That's a mouthful, family. Amen. That's one of the ones you just say, amen, Father. Amen. <laughs> family, friends, we must have the same love and mindset of Jesus Christ. There is no other option. We claim to be a Christian. Then it needs to be obvious by our love for one another. He always valued others above himself. Why do you think he died for us? He value your life above his own. Amen. And he, then he tells you to have the same mindset. He was a servant. Right. Jesus didn't come here to be served. Right. 
He came to serve. That's a whole nother level. I came to serve you. I didn't come for you to serve me. That's why he washed the disciples' feet. Oh, no, let me wash your feet. No, don't wash mine, let me wash yours. He tell me, man, you, you don't know what you're saying. Sit down, I got this. I'm serving you. See, where's our hearts on that? Serving one another. Do you always have to be served or do you serve others? He was humble and obedient to God. Even to the point of dying on the cross. Are we humble and obedient to God? At what point of our feeling uncomfortable do we stop being humble and obedient to God? What point we get to point, this is uncomfortable and you just stop being obedient. You throw the towel in. Because you don't want to be uncomfortable. Because you want to do what you want to do instead of what God said we need to do. Don't you think, don't, don't you think for a minute, me as a preacher, think my whole congregation that God is blessed with is holy. No, it's my goal for us to be holy. It's my desire for us to be holy. I want us to be holy, but I'm no fool. I don't, I can't see what you do when you walk outside these doors. But hear me when I tell you, God does. And that is all that need to be said. God does. Everything is uncovered, laid bare before the eyes of him to who we must give an account. God does. And that needs to motivate us to be holy. He says, be holy because I am holy. Are you with me, family? So let's be humble. Family and friends, we are known to think about others. Are we known to think about others' needs and serving others above ourselves? See, Christ was known for that. Are we known for that? Are we known that we're always one that need to be served? What's our reputation among the body? Are we, ones, are we the ones who are always been served and sacrificing for others, or are we the ones that people sacrifice for? Because remember, being like Christ in his image, he didn't come to be served, he came to serve. He didn't come for us to sacrifice for, he came to sacrifice for us, and then he tells you now go do likewise. He did it and told you to go do likewise. True story, ain't lying. You know, as a young Christian, I saw, one day I saw ministers. They had people always serving them. Now, I never inspired to be a preacher. I didn't wake up at five years old and say, oh, man, I'm going to be a preacher one day. Them, them words ain't never come out of my mouth. Others saw things in me and told me I was my calling and wanted me to pray about it. And that's how I came about it. And God made it clear to me. But it was a scary thing for me because I, I watched ministers growing up. They always went to other people's house and ate fried chicken. <laughs> Which I love fried chicken. Amen. Ain't nothing against fried chicken. Don't get that twisted. Amen. I'm talking about where they go. And people seem to always be giving them things. And I remember telling myself, man, I don't want to be like that. Not that I'm saying if I become a minister, I ain't going to be that way. I, uh -uh, I didn't say that now. I just said I didn't want to be like that. Like, people always doing something for me. And then one day, I was a young Christian. Somebody asked me would I be willing to go and mow the lawn of a minister who was a minister of our church. Of course, I said, sure. I didn't think, yeah. He, first, I thought he can't mow his own lawn. So <laughs> uh, that, uh, that did cross my mind now. And I was like, well, maybe he's sick or something. Uh, okay. Well, let me serve. I want to serve. I had a lawnmower. I, I cut yards on the side for money while I was in school. And it wasn't clear that he wasn't going to pay me because that was my livelihood. 
So I didn't worry about it. I just went and cut the yard. When I got there, they didn't tell me how big the yard is. I ain't lying to you people. His yard was probably about twice as big as this building. This church, this room, twice. Huge, I got this little tiny lawnmower. An hour go by, I'm, I'm maybe 25% done. I'm like, Lord, because I'm going from a football in the field across the board and a little old lineman. In. I got halfway done, I'm about to die. So I just knocked on the door. And I meet him for the first idea. I had never met him. I knew who he was, but I never met him. Church about 1,200 members. So I meet him. I said, man, anyway, I can have a glass of water. I try hard to remember that he gave me water. But what kept coming to my mind, he said, well, there's a faucet out there. I got my little water and I finished the yard. Mm. When I got done, hours later, I put the lawnmower in my truck. Well, I ain't no truck. Well, I had a little piece of car. Put my lawnmower in this piece of car. I got a truck now. That's what the problem is. <laughs> Shut my little door. I got in my little car. I ain't go home. I went direct to the brother who asked me to serve him. One of my best friends on earth, a little tall, skinny white guy. Tall, skinny guy. I went right to him and said, brother, let me tell you something. He said, man, you finished your, oh yeah, I finished the yard. But don't you ever ask me to serve him again. So I was a young Christian, because you should serve no matter what, but that bothered me. You don't give me a cold glass of water. Who do you think I am? And then don't even offer, like make any attention like he's gonna pay me anything. I said, I don't want no money, because I ain't going back over there. And so I had to learn not to have an attitude. When I hear him preach, I'm looking at him sideways, like. Who you talking, you, 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 you reusing the Bible, but look here. I, I, I ain't seen the Bible used in your life. So I had to get over that and repent. But I learned again. When it's my turn, I'm going to serve. Amen. I want to be like Christ. So I tell you, I try to serve you. I don't ask you to do things that I do not do. Just like Jesus did not ask him to do things he hadn't done. He died for our sins. Then he tells you, now go love like me. But family, do we even understand that? We lay our life down for each other. Because that's what Jesus did for us. And look for nothing in return. So I asked Royal, I'm able to take people out and go spend time in the world. You and Rochelle, y'all, look here. Just have invite people in your home, serve them, get to know them, and just give me the receipt. Because I, I don't want you running around trying to catch up with everybody. That's, that's a little too much. Brother, you're blind in one leg and your wife is sick. You serve plenty. Ask people to come to you. And then they serve you food. Every time I go there, she's trying to feed me. Brother, I'm trying to stay a little slim. You don't want a fat preacher. But if I get fat, I'm blaming you. Because he tried to feed him and Rochelle when you're walking the door, when you're walking out the door. Hey, you want to take some fruit with you? No! I'm telling the gospel truth. Am I lying, Roger Rochelle? They say, I'm telling the truth. I told you I ain't lying. But family, we got to be people who serve. And I appreciate, man, if your elders can go out their way to make sure they take you out, spend time with you, find out your need, have you in their homes, trying to serve you, how much more you should imitate and serve? I'm not asking you to do something that we don't do. And we can't do it without our wives. And I'm not trying to boast on anything. I'm trying to inspire you. Amen. To serve one another. Amen. Are you with me, family? 
There's many of us great behind the scenes does great things. I'm so proud of you. Candy, you'll be amazed what Candy do besides guarding our door. I'm just telling you about our trial. I'm telling you right now. Simone told me that this morning. Shoot. But she cares for you. Great servant. I'm not worried. About, I'm, I'm hoping nobody come in and start shooting up churches again. But you know what? Candy's ready. She's going to die for you to make sure you don't get shot. She ain't the only one back there. Chris is ready. I got other brothers saying, what can I do in that area? Because they care about you. Are you with me, family? Yes. TJ, young Christian. Man, you, you got someone to move called TJ. He'll put that junk on his shoulder and get the, get the moving. You might think, hey, don't think TJ ain't strong now. Shoot. My wife says she don't see him with her own eyes. Come on now. I love some Courtney. She's always trying. She asks me and Vanita all the time, what can she do? How can she help? I'm proud of all y'all taking our building and, wrap, and wrapping your arms around it and keeping it clean. I'm so proud of Ken. He's a brother, man. Him, him and Shadarian were serving till they drop. Sometime on Friday, it'd be things you don't know what's going on here, and Ken be catching me sometime at the building. He got here early one day. He here, he'd be catching me a lot here early, and I was trying to sneak a cake up to get the thing. on Ken looked down and saw me. Say, "Hey, my, I got it. I'm coming. I'm coming." You know, and uh, he almost made me drop y'all birthday cake. He scared me. <laughs> I, was, I was just say, uh, he, your deacon. <laughs> but I'm just so proud of him. Yeah, right. Daryl and Prime and just lay their lives down for you. Yes. Cares for people. Daryl saw that I was uh, doing uh, new Christian classes and uh, uh, doing other things around here. Daryl said, brother, look here, you got you to gotta let us, let us serve also and let us serve you. So him and Prime took the new Christian class and took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. They care for you. Yeah. They always want to help. Yeah. I'm so proud of them. And many, many more. Yeah. Proud of you guys. Because you got to remember, write this down, Acts 20, 35. Jesus himself said this. Write this down. It is more blessed to give than what? Yeah. Family, you better take that to heart. Jesus Christ himself said this. It's more blessed to give than receive. Are you a giver? Because God says, man, I'm a poor blessings on you. It's more blessed for you to do that. Let's, we got to make sure that we don't have a house full of people just take. Emotionally. Financially. Just Take. Let's be a house full of people in God's kingdom that just can't wait to give, yeah. serve. Amen. Amen. My wife reminds me all the time when somebody need to move, Mark, that you, 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 you retire in that area. You serve your time. You better not be out there. You better, I better catch you picking up nothing. And so I learned then before JC got a truck, JC take my truck. Just take the truck. Y'all going to help somebody move. That made me feel good. Yeah. Don't put gas in it. I put the gas in it. Y'all just go. Amen. And then Kayla moved and I messed up. <laughs> I, went, I started picking up stuff and everybody in the whole house. Put that down. What are you doing? <laughs> I get this at church. If I even do a light stump, everybody looking at me. My, <laughs> my wife turns and try to find me because she don't heard something. I said, Kayla, Preacher go anywhere on earth and not be, not no one know that he's serving and helping without somebody saying, okay, your time is up. I'll be 62, 62 on February 24th. So I got a few more months before I even hit 62 before I get my social security check. Can I serve? Well, I'm so, I'm so planning for my check. It might be 50 cent, but I'm sure going to get it. I'll tell you right now. We got to have that spirit to give family, even when you, your body says no. I ache. Both knees replaced, both hip replaced. A lot of metal in my body, but I just want to serve. 
I pray we all have that spirit. Let's just serve each other. Amen. Family, friend, let us live in his image. Look at John 15, verse 13, as I close this point out. John 15. I wanted to read this. And God says for us to imitate him. Look at John 15, verse 13. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Come on now. I wipe my forehead and we'll get to reading. Thank you, Darcel. I love my towel. I know you bought me other, but I can't give that one up. It's just something about that one. I wash it all the time, bring it back. John 15, verse, because it's the first, that's what it is. It was the first. John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. My God, my God. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. Look out now. Are you a friend of Jesus? Because he says, I've laid my life down and, I, and I, I've called you my friend and I love you, but it's for those who obey my commands. So sometimes we want to read past that little, that little thing at the end. He says, but it's for those who obey my commands. He calls us to be obedient. Fam, let's be obedient to Christ. Let's imitate our brother. Let's be ones that are more blessed to give than receive. Family friends, let us live in his image and imitate Christ's example of love. Amen. Are you with me? My second and final point, which is, that was four, this is five. To live in his image means to become more and more like Christ. Get this now. Get this now. More and more like Christ in every area of our lives. In every area, every area of our lives, becoming more and more like Christ. See, do you have certain areas of life that you're nothing like Christ in? Because God expects us to be like him in every area. You could be a great server and go help people move, but when it's time to give to God, you're giving pennies. Because, see, you need your money. Or you be a great giver and give your money, but when it's time to help people and serve people, you ain't got time. I'm busy. That's not being like Christ. It's in every area of our lives. Are right, you with me? Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read through this, and I'm gonna, we're going to break it down before we close. 2 Peter. Amen. Thanks for letting me know you're there. Second Peter chapter one, verse one. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, family, let's go. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through, through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus, our Lord. Come on now. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promise so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. Are you with me, family? Amen. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, yeah. and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in a Christian measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. 
Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, family. Family, we must put forth the effort to grow in our relationship with God in Jesus. If we want to receive his grace and peace abundantly, you got to put forth some effort. Are you putting forth effort? When you wake up in the morning and don't feel like reading, do you get up and read? When you go into work and you're frustrated and you hadn't prayed all day, do you pray? Do you put forth the effort? Or you shrink back and do nothing? When those talk behind your back, do you still love? Or you get bitter and have an attitude? I'm not talking to nobody. Are you putting forth the effort to be like Christ? To live in his image. We must put forth every effort. And God says, I will give you peace abundantly. I will overwhelm you with peace when you put forth every effort. How many ever loved somebody who didn't deserve to be loved? That should be every one of us. Our kids most of the time don't deserve to be loved, but we love them. <laughs> Friends don't deserve it, but we love them. But do, you can see yourself, you, did we talk about it this morning, put, how you can see yourself putting forth effort to do those things. Because if you don't put forth every effort, you're going to shrink back. I've had to learn how to separate the sin of a person and yet still love a person. Because you can allow the sin of a person Separate your love from them because you get sick of them. They make me mad. They always messing up. They always doing something they ain't got no business doing. But you got to, okay, you can be sick of the sin, but you make sure you still love the person. And let me tell you how you got to make sure you still love the person. Yeah. Let me tell you how you got to make sure you still love the person now. Because if, if they in sin, and you start hating their sin and, and injecting that hate on them also, the Bible allows you to hate the sin. He does not allow you to hate them. But what you can mess up on, you hate the sin, but then you, you sick of them, you don't want to be around them. You don't want to call them or talk to them. When you see them, you go the other way. You don't want to get caught up in that. Remember, you, you got to love them no matter what. Just like Christ loved you unconditionally. How many times you think you've sinned against God? He could have went, I'm sick of them. Zip. And make you disappear. Really? And yet he didn't do that to you. Well, how dare you want to do that to somebody else? I don't get caught up in politics. The junk's so stupid to me. Make me want to vomit. But I have to make sure I still pray for those and have a heart to love them in spite their sins. Lord have mercy they be testing me. I have to stay, keep praying to Jesus, keep me holy and not get caught up in their stupidity. We have to do that for each other. How many times have you ever heard somebody, your kids or somebody in your family say something stupid? Raise your hand. Okay, that's everybody. To the point you just shake your head like, Lord have mercy. Man, go on over there. I'm going this way. Okay. You don't see so you separate yourself from the person. You can help them for what the stupidity, but don't separate yourself from them. Still love them. Because you separate yourself from them, then they're gonna feel unloved by you. The only time you're gonna love me if I do what you want me to do? Or I say everything perfect for you. We gotta love unconditionally, family. Are you with me? Then we'll get abundant peace. Verse three said, God give us his divine power of the of the Holy Spirit to live in his image. Do y'all know we have the Holy Spirit to live in his image? The problem is some of us don't don't use the Holy Spirit. We don't invoke the Holy Spirit in our lives. We got to make sure y'all we have the spirit and it will see you through in all circumstances and all situations. And you got to trust the spirit when it speaks. Listen. 
and do what the Spirit tells you to do. How many times has the Spirit told you to do something? And I'm, tell, I'm talking about, I, I, I've had the Spirit say something to me, and, and then I listen, I go to the direction they want me to go, and some, I look back, something crazy happened over there. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm glad I listened. You ever had that? Spirit speaks to us, and some, the Spirit also speaks to other people. Like, Venus told me something like, babe, I don't think we should go that way. Or, honey, I don't think we should put our money there. I learned to listen. One time I asked him, say, well, why, 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 why you say that? So the Spirit's just speaking to me. It's just, when I think about doing that, it's just like, mm, don't do that. I said, mm, we ain't doing that. We got to listen, family, to the Spirit in us. Verse 5, we must make every effort to gain these qualities. I just love how God just breaks that down. We must make every effort, in verse 5, to gain these qualities qualities. We must be intentional in adding these qualities to our lives. Yeah. These qualities will ensure that we live in his image. Yeah. So his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us the very great and precious promise so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, have an escape the corruption of, in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, here we go in verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. Think about what he's saying. Make every effort to add to your faith. Faith is living in his image. Do we have faith, family? Living in his image begins with faith. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 6. And hold your finger there because we're going to keep coming back to that. But go to Hebrews. We're going to keep coming back to 2 Peter. But go to Hebrews 11, verse 6. Listen to what it says. If you dare say amen. Okay, that was kind of weak. Hold your finger in 2 Peter. I hear the pages turning. If you dare say amen. Come on, let's go. And without faith... And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. See, God says, you want to play the game? I don't exist. You have no faith. I, I can't help you. You don't even believe that I exist when I'm God. There is no hope for you. Family, we got to know that there's a God. And we got to know God through his word, not through what we feel, what we think and what's on the Internet. You better open God's word and read for yourself. God did not make this hard. So you may grow in your faith. Are you with me, family? And then he said, add to faith goodness. You know what goodness is? Goodness is holy, pure, and righteousness. God says you got to add your faith goodness. Goodness is holy, pure, and righteousness. That's what goodness is. That's a biblical terminology of goodness. And then he tell you to add to your faith goodness. Holy, pure, and righteousness. When we do these things, we will be in his image. Family, now you can look around the room. We all look different, don't we? Some of us are white with a bunch of hair on the face. Some of us are brown. Some of us are caramel. Some of us are bald-headed. Some of us got a little bit of hair, and I'm going to hold on to it till I die. Some of us got a lot more hair. Came to see the eyes, got so much hair. Where your eyes at? He's he going to spread out so I can see it. We're all different. But do you know we're all supposed to look like Christ and not ourselves? We're supposed to be in his image, not our image. We're all different, but yet we can look alike. The same traits, same character, same attributes. That's powerful. So that way, if they see me and Felicity and we laughing and talking and going on, they got like, they must be Christians. They look alike, talk alike, act alike. Because we have the same traits. Kind and respectful. People can see these things. Remember John 13, 34? 
By your love for one another, all men will know what? You, you don't say it like you understand it. You'll know what? God says, you'll know, they'll know that you belong to me. You're my disciples. It's like God says, They're, that's mine. They're mine. Because you can see their traits. So what, Mattel taller than me? The Holy Spirit, same height. So we good. We got the same traits. Are you with me? So we got to be willing to take on goodness. So you're supposed to add goodness to your life. And then when you add goodness, the Bible says, then you add knowledge. A trait, listen with knowledge, a trait that comes from God along with wisdom and understanding. Whoa. That's knowledge. A trait that's given to you by God. So God says, you know I exist. No matter how many phony people on this earth, fake news, they like to claim it. You're going to claim that he don't exist. That's fake. You know I exist. Because God says, I put it in you. Do you know that's in the Bible? He said, now I just want you to live in my image. So that's why there is no mercy when you meet God and go, well, I ain't know you exist. I ain't know. That don't know stuff is not going to fly. God says, I made you and I put me in you. In fact, God says, I made you in my what? In his image. You are made for the image of God. Not for your own image to do what you want to do. Are you with me? Look at Proverbs chapter one. It talks a little bit about this. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 7, family. Are you here? You still alive? We bringing it down. We talking about being in the image of Christ now. Maybe I'm stepping on some toes. Because you don't think you're in his image. I don't want to step on it. I want to stomp on it. That was a soft stomp, by the way. Look at verse 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? What? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You don't fear God, you will have no knowledge. You will have none. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Lord have mercy. So you want to be known as a fool? I hope and pray not. Anybody go around to my God don't exist, you a fool. And there's no hope for you if you don't repent. You can't tell God, this is what I think what, what you could do to go to heaven. This is all I think I need to do. No, we submit to God's will, not our own. Family and friends, we should pray. Listen to me now. You should pray every day for knowledge from God. You should pray every day to have knowledge. God, give me knowledge of you. Help me understand you. I can't, I can't fathom you, but Father, give me something that I can put my arms around and grasp because I want to be with you, God. Some of us, you got to make sure that when God gives you blessings, you recognize where it came from. You want to know the knowledge of God? Look what you got. How do you get it? His name is God. That should build your faith. How many times you got something like, man, only God could have done this. Lord have mercy. Only God could have made this happen. Not me, but God. Michael closed the deal a couple weeks ago. And he texts me. Whew. Dad, I know this ain't me. You remember that? So I know this ain't me. This is God. Because I know I know who I am. It ain't me. It's God. I'm glad you know. So get to repenting and so God can give you more. Are you with me? You feel me? All right, come on now. Oh, come on. So what has God got to do for you? But tell, let's see what God done done for you. Come on now. And, and you got a girlfriend in the kingdom of God. Being holy and pure. And you're in the military. You know how you knuckleheads are before you find Jesus. Because I was one of them too. 
but we got Christ. You heard what, who was that, uh, uh, Tremai? Talked about his communion, about what God has done for him. You understand what God has done for you? That's the knowledge of God. Recognizing it, acknowledging it, and then accepting it and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many times you say thank you, Lord, in a day? Or do some of you just forget? Man, you should be saying thank you, Lord, all through your day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Diane, I'm not in jail. That I found you. I'll I, I be thankful for everything. That I found you, because I know if I ain't found you, I'd be in jail. I know the life I live. I'm glad I found him at an early age. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And then you, you had mercy on me and grace and gave me a woman. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that since I was nine years old, and now I'm 62, and she still lives with me. Thank you, Jesus. That's all God. That's all God. Won't he do it? Come on now. He said he would. The issue is us not believing. But won't he do it? I hear you, Ken. You can't hide. But we just family. Are you feel me? I know that's right. I heard you straight up. Family and friends, we should pray daily for knowledge from God. God, give me knowledge. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. Help me make the best decision. Guide my thoughts. Guide my spirit. Guide my heart. Keep my heart fresh. Keep me close to you, Father. Now, here we go. Say, so as you get that knowledge, he says, now, make every effort to add to your knowledge self-control. All right, family, you, you think you know what self-control is? Okay. A character trait of God. Did you not know that? It's a character trait of who God is. Why do you think you tell you better have self-control? It is a fruit of the spirit. It is the ability to exercise restraint. And to have the ability to submit one's will to God's will. So do we have self-control? Have you submitted your will to God's will? Do we have the ability to submit, family, above what we want? Then he says, add to your self-control perseverance. You think you know what perseverance is? I think we feel like we know what it is. But you really get to know it when you live it. Persevering defined as the ability to remain steadfast. Nothing moves you. You don't freak out. You hold on because you know God is coming. You know who your savior is. You know the trial you're going through, he will bring you through it. It ain't persevering with hard times because you're cursing everybody out. You're mad at the world. Walk around with an attitude. I wish somebody would say something to me right now. You don't know what I'd be going through. That's not perseverance. We got to make sure, family, we persevere. In trials and to endure through difficult times. It is a gift from God to sustain us to our end. It's a gift from God to sustain us till he comes back. That's right. Persevere, family. It's going to be all right. It might not feel all right right now, but it's going to feel all right when he gets here for the rest of your life. Remember, on earth is a short time. We're on here for a minute. Who I was telling this morning? That's Felicity. I said, Felicity, hey, look here. Somebody asked me, I said, I'm, yeah, I'm aching, but I'll be 62 soon. I know I got less years on this earth. 
He can take me home today if he wants to. Felicia said, I ain't ready for all that now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a few more things I like to do and let him use me. I hear you, but my point is, take me when you're ready, Father. But if you're going to leave me here, I'm going to work until, like, until I die. I'm going to work and give you everything I got. Winston needs something, I'm going to be there. He raised his voice at Mona, I'm going to be there. I ain't worried about all that. I'm just teasing. I, ain't, I know that's why most of I ain't worried about it either. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> that's my boy. That's my family. Just like the rest of you. Family, we got to persevere. Are you with me? And then he says, and to add from perseverance, add godliness. Add to perseverance, godliness. Godliness means to conform to God's will. His wishes and obey his word. Family, we are, when we are godly, we are living in his image. Are you with me? Amen, mama. So I pray for now when you read these things, you just don't read through them. You know what they mean. Because sometimes we think we know what they mean. Because, you know, we get, we've been given worldly definition. But when you start looking at what the Bible talking about with these words, it, it's taking us to the image of Christ. It's a whole nother level that God is calling us to do. I love my commentary and Bible. I can read up on it and learn like, whoa. Helps me get deeper into Christ. Thank God for the word. Godliness. Then he said, add to godliness. I'm almost done, family. Got a couple more. He added to godliness, mutual affection. Look out now. The Bible, the biblical definition of mutual affection is, a, is having a sense of connectedness, a brotherly kindness that motivates, listen to it now, that motivates people to do good. My God! Your mutual affection motivates your brothers and sisters to do good. It moves them because you're so kind and loving. They want to imitate you. Your words inspire them to do good. We have a connection with one another. And no one can separate us. That's that mutual affection, family. It's a sisterhood. A brotherhood. It is being closely, closely, closely linked, linked to one another. It is a spiritual family. It's God's family. And we're in it. In God's family, there's no cliques. We don't just serve the same people. We serve everybody. Roy and I don't give it to the same people, we give it to everybody. Singles, marriage, and the like. Dating couples, everybody. Because we want to help everybody. We're connected. We got with Petron and Rosny on Friday night. We shut the place down and closed at 10. I think we left 10 and 10. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I didn't realize we had been there that long. But that's that mutual affection for one another. That's that connection. That we don't look at time. We gotta build each other up. Inspire one another to be like Christ. We gotta do that for one another. I used to go, I'm telling you the gospel truth ain't lying. I used to go Wednesday night to give it the elders. I had to stop that. So we gotta do daytime stuff. Cause we go Wednesday night we sat there so long, one time starving. And we got there probably about, after church, probably about 9, 15, 9, 30. And we sat there almost till 11, 15. And I said, well, I guess I better order some food. I'm hungry. Then they said, the kitchen been closed. <laughs> what? The world royal? We ain't doing this no more. <laughs> we gonna go in daytime. Because <laughs> we might, we stay too long. <laughs> See, that's that mutual affection. That care for one another. Amen. We don't check in and check out. Amen. We're all in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I know if I'm going out to eat with Daryl and Prime, hey, look, 
Hey, they, they, hey we got to go in the daytime. I don't like doing no night, nighttime stuff. Because you be trying to, uh, oh, I guess I got to stop doing it. Don't be trying to flick the light on me now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I convicted myself. <laughs> okay, Father, I get to hear now. I get it now. <laughs> for the rest of y'all, I'll be flicking light on my memories. Y'all got to go home. Y'all been here forever. <laughs> and then Roy, hey, Roy said, I, I about lost it. Uh, my blind brother said this to me. Mark, you know flicking light don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> I about all just lost it. Yes, he did, family. Yes, he did. I said, man, you are crazy. <laughs> but that's what, that's family. We don't know how to go home and give each other. I flip the light, I go outside, my parking lot full of people talking. I thought I was going home. That mutual affection. <laughs> Are you with me? And my last one, we got to add to mutual affection. And my brother, my son, my newest deacon said this morning, love. Add to mutual affection, love. Let's read Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. He even read it for us this morning. Oh, I love y'all. So I wind down, I pray this help us bless you, draw close to God. It called us to be in his image. Five, verse one and two. If you dare say amen. amen. Follow God's example. I mean, they want to drop the mics. It's like, what do you say after that? Follow God's example. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ, here we go now, just as Christ loved us. Yeah. See what I mean? Okay, so that's what he's telling us now, to love like him. Yeah. Not just love, but love like him. Right. To be in his image. Yeah. So that's a whole nother level of love. Yeah. Yeah. And then he tells us to walk in it. Yeah. That's, right. yeah. that's that mama frightened love. Mama heaven love. They, they just be loving you. They just love you, man. They, yeah, you just walk by them, you feel they love. It oozed out of them. It jumped on you. That's that love. We got to all have that. That mutual love for one another. And walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as fragrant offerings and sacrifice to God. Oh, my goodness. Come on now. You know, I see Brian and Darcel. He got his arm around Darcel, my sister, and he's giving all that love. But I love her too. <laughs> Shoot. You just love her marriage love. But my love, that agape love. <laughs> you got the love that I, 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 wanna, I, wanna believe, I believe in you, Brian. I know I love you, man. You're awesome. So I know you love as your wife and you love as your sister too, right? But brother, I love as my sister. So it's my turn to hug. Let's go on the road. <laughs> man. I love it like my daughter. Wait, wait, I ain't through. <laughs> Shoot, it's my daughter. Uh, now you go ahead and hug her back. She's yours. I can't take her from you, cause I got my own. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Come on, baby. No, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> he got you. Invitation. That's that invitation, brother. <laughs> that was a good one. Lord have mercy, that was a good one. That's my family, man. Lord have mercy. I know y'all love me, man. Because I love you too. Amen. In closing, family, God calls us to walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us. To walk in the way of love involves loving each other sacrificially. And with a servant's heart. Love must become a way of life. Love is the spirit of the fruit of the spirit. God's spirit allows us to love like he loves. 
Family and friends, growing in the image of Christ means to grow in having the character and attributes of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we practice these attributes, we'll live in his image. Yes. Let us make it our goal, our purpose to live in his image Amen. each and every day of our lives. Family, it's time Let's go. to walk in love. Family, it's time Let's go. to live in Christ's image. Family, it's time Let's go. to give God everything we have and to God be the glory. Amen, 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 family. Amen. Family, God is good. And all the time, let us pray. Tim, you mind coming up and praying for us? Please. Let us stand and give our arms and air to God. Lift our hands up. Amen. Let God. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Father, thank you for the words that we heard this morning, God. Thank you for your love, God. Help us, Father. We need to walk in the way of love, God, just as Jesus did, Lord. Help us to be outwardly focused and focused on others' needs before ourselves, God. Help us to add all these character traits, uh, Father, to our faith, God. Thank you, Father, for uh, blessing us with faith, God, and blessing us with a relationship with you and with each other, God. It's great to laugh together as well, God, just to be family and to be able to love you and love each other and help us to love the lost, God. Help us to have a heart for others, God. Thank you for your heart for us. Thank you for a great service. Thank you for your, your mercy and your, your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good afternoon, family. Uh, my name is Jamie Watkins. I'm going to be leading uh, the closing portion of our service where we'll have a response and announcements. And uh, what I love about today's message is the fact that we can hear, um, you, you can be convicted and you can smile and laugh all at the same time. Um, and I'm sure I was thinking and feeling things, writing some things down, and hopefully you were doing the same thing. But um, th that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When he described, when Mark was describing serving, I really, it made me think about how, when I was a, a, a younger Christian, how the brothers would ask me, hey, make sure you're, you're serving. Make sure you're doing stuff and not just living your life and like going to church and then going home. Make sure you're doing the extra stuff. Make sure you're participating in like, the car washes and some of the extra things because uh, it helps you. It helped me be more humble. It helped me see the needs of those around me. Uh, even simple things like what we do, serving when it comes to ushering and, and, and just security. security, the things that we sign up for, yeah. that we have written out, uh, teaching. It helps you see the needs of other people. It helps you take your eyes off yourself and you put your eyes on your brothers and sisters. And uh, this is kind of funny. I was using the restroom earlier, and I know I'm one of the taller people here at the church. And I was looking up, and I was like, man, that fan has a lot of lint on it, right? So I was thinking, you know what? Most people probably haven't looked up to see, and I couldn't reach it. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I could clean it off right now. And I started thinking, okay, well, I'll have to stand on the sink. And I was like, no, the last thing we need to hear during service. <laughs> I'm over 200 pounds and this scene crashes down and I'm telling people I was trying to clean the fan. So I have no problem cleaning the fan, but maybe there's a ladder somewhere. Okay, all right, so I'll take that one out today. All right, um, but it's, it's, you know, things like that, when you do them with your, um, your family, your, your church family, it helps you not just be a taker, as Mark explained. And Obviously, lint on a fan in the bathroom is a simple example, but there's sometimes more spiritual needs that, that occur, and we have to extend ourselves to to want to serve. And um, I wrote more, one more thing here. It says, 
have this, well, what Mark just said, have the spirit to give even when your body says no. Yeah. When you're mentally tired, when you're physically tired, when you're, when you're um, the people you're closest to do things that get on your nerves, are you going to shut down? That's not serving. So let's, let's find ways to serve and help us to be closer, to bond to each other, and also help, help us with our humility. The second thing that stood out to me the most during Mark's message today was when he described putting forth the effort. And actually yesterday, myself, Kyla, and Whitney grabbed some pizza at the beach, but on the way over there, she had started listening to a, in essence, a, a 10 part message um, from a church that she used to go to that basically just, it was a walk through the Bible. And each of the 10 parts is about an hour long. And I heard the first part of it while in the car, the first part of part one. And it was cool to see her wanting to help her young daughter understand the background and the story behind things. And this morning when I woke up, when I woke up, I said to myself, you know what? I need to just go through that myself. Like I wanted to feel the need to be a student again and hear someone describe portions of the Bible and me take the notes like I'm like I'm a student. So I texted her this morning, I said, hey, can you send me that? Because I I think that when it comes to making the effort, this is what we got to get on right. It's easy to get to a certain point and know that you've grown, but then do you want to go from whatever level you are to the next level up? That, that's the part that no one else can see. It, only you can see it. And I felt, you know what, it's been a, it's been a while since I've just been a good student and wrote, written notes and notes and notes about certain parts of the Bible or stories about the Bible. So we must put, in, put forth the effort to do that and um, that's just something that's needed. We need it to help ourselves grow spiritually because you never know who we can impact. I was sitting here um, early in the service and I had a friend of mine text me and they said, hey, tell Mark I said, I haven't told you this yet. They said, tell Mark I said hello and I'm gonna be coming to service real soon. And I've been praying about, this is one of the guys I coach with but I've been praying about me helping the people I coach with, and it's been four years. And, and, and when I say help, meaning see someone become a Christian. And it hasn't happened yet, but I felt like God was encouraging me by that text for me to continue putting in the effort, yes. you know, to be their friend, to yep. be there for them. So Amen. thank you, Mark, for uh, always giving your heart. Thank you, Benita, for, for being the wife that he needs to be and uh, encouraging us through your stories, through your conviction, and through your example. Amen. And for our announcements, this coming Wednesday, we have Chris Wilson Sr. continuing in the Ask Seek Knock series this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here in this room, amen. And while that is going on, we will have in the, um, the fellowship hall, we will have on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday this coming Wednesday, Saul and Patrice, uh, Tremai and Simone, Kenneth Shadarian leading a teen and preteen devotional. So it'll be a meeting, but more so like a devotion. Pa the, for the parents, sorry, sorry. For the parents only, all right? Now, for the preteen and teen children, or young folk, we will have a devotional on October the 6th. So October the 6th, pre, t, excuse me, teen and preteen devotional. It'll be right after church. Lunch will be provided and it'll end around 3 p.m. So October the 6th, mark your calendar. Teen and preteen devotional right after church. And lunch will be provided. And if there are no other announcements, I will close with a prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for encouraging us. Father, I pray that we can be the, the servants that we need to be. I pray that we can have a heart to want to uh, take our walk with you higher and have a desire to want to learn your word. So as the teen said earlier this morning, we will want to be more like you because your, your word is on our hearts. We're reading it and we want to live it. Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to have a place where we can meet 
safely. Father, I knew what this place looked like uh, when, when, when it wasn't the church, when it was just a place used for business, and how much has changed. And uh, not just the, the physical aspects of this building, Father, but, but the spirit of the men and women and the brothers and sisters inside of it. Father, I pray that we can live our lives uh, that will be pleasing to you, and you can uh, not just bless us for it, Father, but help us understand the big picture with the goal being heaven. Thank you so much. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.